Hello and welcome. This video was originally going to cover a lot more topics, but I had a change of heart and decided to split this up into a mini-series on some common misconceptions thrown around about socialist states. The first one, which, as you can guess by the title, is on the misconception of starvation and famines being rampant across these countries. This idea primarily comes from China and the Soviet Union, which happen to be the two primary targets of this production. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. The only famine to ever happen within Communist China was the Great Chinese Famine of 1959 to 1961, during the Great Leap Forward. This had not been the result of policy alone, but rather by both horrid weather conditions and poor logistics by the Communist Party, which was trying to make the transition into socialism at the time. Had there not been this series of natural disasters that occurred during this highly sensitive time of transition, or had the Great Leap Forward been executed at an earlier or later date, the country would not have been caught with its pants down, and the millions of deaths that occurred directly or indirectly as a result of the poor timing surrounding the famine would have most likely never happened, or at the very least not to the extreme and often overestimated extent that it did. While this particular event was catastrophic, similar crises on this magnitude have actually been a regular occurrence across China's history. Proportionally, several periods of famine have exceeded the death toll of the so-called Great Chinese Famine in very recent past. Take for instance another three-year famine, the Chinese Famine of 1846 to 1849, in which around 22.5 million people perished due to starvation. If we acknowledge the Great Famine death range of 15 to 30 million, based on several approximations, and use the upper bound for a more conservative estimate, we can see that proportionally, the 1840s famine, occurring with a Chinese population of 423 million in 1846, was almost 20% more devastating than the 1960s famine with a Chinese population of 668 million in 1959. Using the lower bound of 15 million, the difference is even more profound. This just goes to show how history has and is being ever so slightly warped in order to push an agenda against Mao's China and communism on the basis of what was the last of a series of recurring natural disasters that devastated China throughout its millennia-long history. But one may argue that the raw devastation caused by the Great Chinese Famine properly designates it as the Great One. However, there is another famine that exceeds even this margin. Over the course of roughly four years, the Chinese famines in 1907 and 1911 are accredited to a hard number of 25 million deaths. This not only almost meets the upper bound of the deaths estimated for the 1960s famine, but also exceeds it proportionally, having been over 30% more devastating by comparison. This simply concludes that the other famines in Chinese history could have been easily given the moniker of Great. Through the efforts of the Communist Party after the Great Leap Forward, these frequent devastating famines would be completely eradicated from China. Since then, it has been over 55 years without a single major starvation-related catastrophe in the country. But not many people talk about this perspective at all. The notion that the Soviet Union featured frequent food shortages and famines largely comes from the many photographs taken of people in bread lines during the late 1980s and early 1990s. This was not caused by the Soviet economic system, but rather its deterioration by Mikhail Gorbachev through his liberalization reforms, which, through undemocratic means, instituted the period of unrest in the USSR that would remain up to its dissolution. The strife caused by his liberalization policies began the string of bread lines that are now, in an ironic twist, tied to socialism and communism rather than capitalism in the Western world today. What's even more shocking about this association is that the average calorie consumption of Soviet citizens eclipsed that of the United States' up until the year Gorbachev took power. The only instance of calorie consumption being drastically lower than the United States' was in the year 1991, when the reforms that hurt the country began seeping into the very nutrition and well-being of the Soviet people. But one cannot talk about famines and starvation in the Soviet Union without mentioning the Holdemore. While there were a couple of other Soviet famines, the Holodomor is often cited as a key criticism of the Soviet Union for its alleged genocide against Ukrainians in the early 1930s. Supposedly, this was in an effort to depopulate the region and replace it with the Russian population. However, there are several major fallacies between this narrative and the factual information. The most recent scholarly estimate for the famine's toll hangs at around 2.6 million in excess deaths, which is already half as devastating as the Russian famine of 1921. Furthermore, the famine did not only affect Ukraine, but also southern Russia and Kazakhstan, where conditions were equally as bad, if not worse. So if the famine was not organized as a deliberate act against Ukrainians, then what actually caused it? In large part, poor seed quality, poor cultivation, dry weather, 
and crop infestations in the years prior to the famine led to an overestimation of the total crop yield for late 1932 and early 1933. However, the Kulaks, or peasant farmers of Ukraine and the surrounding regions, are to blame for the deliberate killing of livestock in an effort to protest against Soviet collectivization, which, ironically, was aimed at permanently eliminating the string of famines ongoing from the prior Russian Empire. This wreaked havoc on not only Ukraine's population, but the entirety of the Soviet Union, albeit more so in its southern areas such as the Caucasus, the Stan countries, and of course, Ukraine. During the famine itself, though, the Soviet government made deliberate efforts to assist those in afflicted areas. Thus, it could be concluded that the Holodomor was not a deliberate genocide, but rather a nationwide catastrophe caused by natural disasters and petty greed, and that the Soviet Union was not a starvation-ridden place, as many people are led to believe. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this first of several videos covering basic misconceptions on socialist states. Before I close, I must give a big thank you to my good friend Nara Visionism for helping out with the information on the Holdemore in this video. His excellent compilation of sources on the topic and his YouTube channel link will be in the description. Thanks for watching.